afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Red Berry Wheel here, and welcome back to another quick Civil Air Patrol video. In today's video, I'm talking about different badges that cadets are authorized to wear. And I know I've gotten this video requested a couple of times, and I do apologize for the delay with coming up with the recording, but here it is. So let's go ahead and talk about the different badges. The first badges that we'll talk about are the aviation related badges. So if you are not aware, if you are 18 years old or older, then you may take part in something called air crew. And so air crew is essentially the air component of uh, Civil Air Patrol's search and rescue operations. And you can serve as a mission scanner, a mission observer, and an airborne photographer as an 18 year old. So if you are 18 or older, whether you're a cadet or a senior member, then you are authorized to train in those capacities. And you can also become an air branch director, but that's for another discussion on like different levels of things that you can do. But anyway, so there are badges associated with being an air crew member. And if you are a mission scanner, there's a slightly different version one than if you are a mission observer. So please make sure you know the difference between the two and I'll show them here for a mission observer and a mission scanner. Um, the mission observer is the, like the next level, so you're required to finish your mission scanner first before you pursue your mission observer. And responsibilities for that include like, well, mission scanner is more of just being able to scan out the window and being able to detect clues in addition to communicating actively as just a team member and say, oh, I've observed this, or like there's traffic at three o'clock. Well, three o'clock would be this way for me, but it would be this way for you. Three o'clock like 500 feet above us, a couple miles away, just working actively to communicate with your team members and just learn how to effectively search and be part of that team. Mission Observer is a little bit more advanced where you're using radio communications and communicating either with air traffic control or ATC or potentially the ground teams that are working on the ground or mission base. It varies and you might additionally be using the GPS unit by plugging in coordinates, helping with navigation, and if the GPS unit isn't working, being able to use a sectional chart to be able to guide the pilot because the pilot's main duty is fly the plane. Just fly the plane and do what you need to. So if you are an air crew member, you are authorized to wear the associated badge with that. There's also the pre-solo and solo badges associated with aviation. So if you attend an academy, like one of the flight academies, you would be able to wear the pre-solo badge. And if you do actually solo, then you would get to wear the solo badge. And there's also now the cadet SUAS badge. Once you complete the requirements associated with the SUAS, then you are authorized to wear that badge. The regulation that I'm referring to is 35-6 and it refers to all of the operational ratings, awards, and badges. Now it was published in 2015, so I don't think it currently includes the Cadet SUAS badge, but I foresee that will be updated very, very soon, if not currently being updated as we speak. I'm not sure yet, but it, it will be updated at some point soon. And I will link 35-6 in the description just for a reference if you are interested in looking at like what the specific requirements are to wear the different aviation badges. The next badge is the NRA Marksmanship Badge, which you are authorized to wear one on your uniform and you must meet the requirements as part of the NRA program before being authorized to wear it on your uniform. The next badge that cadets can wear is called the Model Rocketry Badge, and it's like a nice little circular, like, uh, oval badge, which essentially you earn after completing performance and written requirements for three different phases of the Model Rocketry Badge. And so there is the Redstone, the Titan, and Saturn phases, and each one progressively builds off of the last one. So the first one is just kind of introducing you to rockets with the simpler rocket, and you become more advanced as you get towards that Saturn phase. So there are different rockets associated with them and you can obtain these rockets through National. They have a few STEM kits that are available for units to use. And once you use that STEM kit, then you can move on to the next STEM kit and so on. I honestly wish that I had earned my model rocketry badge because I did all the written requirements. I took all the tests online for it but I didn't actually build all the rockets, which is actually the fun part. So don't be like me and try to finish your model rocketry badge, which is a really cool badge that you get to wear. And honestly, um, you can't wear it as a senior member, so do it while you're a cadet. <laughs> 
The final section that I'm going to talk about now is the Cyber and STEM badges, which is in CAP pamphlet 60-41, and I will include that down in the description down below as a link for you to access and take a look at if you are interested in pursuing these. Now there are different levels to these, there's three, there's basic, intermediate, and advanced, and you'll be able to see the different requirements for attaining each of these levels. So one of the big things with these badges is that it's really trying to promote interest in cyber and just interest in general STEM. And so like, for example, I'm looking here, the basic criteria for you to earn just the, the first level or basic cadet cyber badge is to complete activities in the CAP introduction to cybersecurity activity guide and do at least 20 hours of hands-on activities. There's also a requirement to participate in Cyber Patriot, and that has to be at least 20 hours of active involvement, and then also writing a paper in association with a cyber-related job or occupation and submit it to an AEO or a cyber education officer just so that you receive feedback and get approval for it. So that's just for the basic cyber badge. After completing the requirements for the basic one, then you are eligible to start working your way up to the more advanced badges, which is intermediate and then advanced. Then with the STEM badge, it has slightly different requirements. They are not the same thing, okay? They are not the same thing and the contact hours are not supposed to overlap. They're supposed to be separate. And the requirements in order to achieve the basic cadet STEM badge is to have achievement three in the cadet program, so the FIKE achievement, have at least 12 hours of eligible STEM activities. And so that, that can be from a log that you put together. So if you take a STEM class in school, those hours could count towards your STEM badge. Or if you do like a robotics club, that could also count. Or stellar explorers, if you participate in the competition, those would also count towards your STEM badge. The last requirement is a career dossier again. So just putting together a one to two page paper about an occupation relating to a STEM career and an AEO provides feedback to your paper. So that is just your quick summary, just wrapped up in a bow right there of the different badges that you are authorized to wear as a cadet member. If you do have any questions or if you're like, wait, I have to log hours for stuff and do you, you have any questions, anything that I mentioned today, like the regulations or the publications, I will include down in the description below and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you may have. So thank you guys so much for watching and that is all folks. Until next time, toodles.